Hi and hello everyone. What we have been seeing so far is uh, the discrete time Markov chain and uh, certain properties. Uh, we have seen some properties basically what we were interested in like you know in one step what happens or in some finite number of steps what happens. But more often what we are interested when studying this Markov chain is what is called as the long term behavior or the long run behavior of this Markov chain right. So, what is the long run behavior of this Markov chain which means that you know as uh, you know time after a large amount of time into the future like what is going to be its behavior right or when the system is in operation for a long time and in, in some stability uh, is existing or not you want to analyze and what is its behavior at such a situation is what uh, would be the general interest in any uh, analysis that you do with the Markov chain theory. One way to characterize that is to look at this quantity right. You know P is the transition probabilities are one step what is happening. P to the power n is gives you the n step transition probabilities. Now, this n as n tends to infinity what is happening to this. So, this is what is uh, you want to look at it. Now, if you look at say for example, a particular example. Uh, if P is given by this matrix which is 1 by by 4 by 5 and 2 by 3 1 by 3 as this right and if I raise this to the power n and if I let this n tends to infinity you would see that this approaches to this matrix. So, a long time into the future if I want to look at the movement of you know states from suppose if this is state 1 and state 2 from 1 to 1 or 1 to 2 or from 2 to 1 and 2 to 2 right. If I look at it, it, it exhibits this behavior is what you are. So, what do you we are seeing here is that the rows are identical right. So, this one can think of this as you know the individual elements right that is what you are looking at it p i j of n where n tends to infinity is what you have it. Now, it becomes independent of this i that is the meaning of you know uh, the column values remain the same or rows becoming identical means right. So, it becomes independent of the initial state in which it is going to start it is going to be in with this probability it is going to be in this state with this probability is going to be in. So, this is a very nice behavior that you are seeing with respect to this Markov chain. Markov chain we mean like you know we are characterizing by its uh, TPM right. So, initial distribution its effect also is gone and you are in some sense uh, there is some stability in the system. So, this is a very nice behavior, but one has to understand that with this kind of kind of behavior does not hold for all Markov chain. So, you want to see for what kind of uh, Markov chains are under what conditions or under what characteristic if the Markov chain has such a behavior. So, this is the uh, typical behavior that one would expect you know to have in, in a particular system when things are in uh, stable situation or in equilibrium in other words. Okay. So, the long term behavior is related to say three concepts one is what we call limiting distributions the other is stationary distributions and close related to these two is what you call ergodicity uh, idea ok. Now, what is a limiting distribution okay. So, you call a vector for each of this state we call that as a limiting distribution for a Markov chain with transition probability matrix P if pi i is given by this which is what you know we have taken in the previous example p j i of n step transition probability you take and you take n to infinity if it becomes pi i. Of course, provided this limit exists what are whatever this pi i's this limits exist and they sum to 1 right. Only when they sum to 1 you can call this as distribution. It may be possible that this limit exists right, but not the limiting distribution which means this limit might exist, but they may not sum to 1 for all i in s right. So, 
in that case you know you don't call that as limiting distribution the moment you use the word distribution we mean that the sum is 1 limiting because you are looking at the limiting behavior. So, it is possible that the limiting probabilities would exist, but not the limiting distribution. Okay. So, by this way of defining what do we mean by limiting distribution, whenever a limiting distribution exists, then it does not depend on the initial state. So, we can write this pi i would as if you know it is of this, when you take the n step state probabilities rather than the transition probabilities and if I take its limiters and infinity what I would be getting as the same pi i's because I call limiting distribution only if this is true when it does not depend on the initial state. So, that is would be then equivalent to you know looking at this pi i being given by this state probabilities. So, whether just you look at state probabilities or look at the transition probabilities you are ending up with this pi i. And what is the interpretation if in this sense that you know you can see that this pi i is the probability of being in state i a long time from now, right? A long time into the future, if you want to ask at an arbitrary point of time, what is the probability that you know I will be seeing state i? The probability is this pi i. Now, the question is because this is what you know you want to see like for in a long time into the future like what where would be your Markov chain would be what is the probability that I could find the Markov chain in a particular state is what is the limiting distribution gives you. Now, the question is when does a Markov chain have a limiting distribution in our case limiting distribution means that does not depend on the initial distribution and if there is one exists how to determine it of course, you can say that you know you rise you compute this and do. but is there an alternative way where you know you can compute this pi in a much simpler way because this is not going to be an easier way of doing it. Okay. Obtain this n step transition probabilities and then take its limit is not going to be an easier way. Of course, though this is one of the way you may be able to do for smaller ones, but in a more complex situation this may not be possible. So, what do you do like is there a way or how to determine it right is what is the question that you want. Now, related to that is what we call as stationary distribution. Again, there is a pi i, this may be same as that one or otherwise, right. So, this pi i and you will know why the same notation pi i we are using it for both a little later. Pi i is called we call a stationary distribution or invariant distribution or invariant measure for a Markov chain with the transition probability matrix P if what? If pi i's are non-negative for all i, they sum to 1 and they satisfy this relationship. Okay. So, this relationship can easily be derived using your chapman kolmo grove equation by and taking its limit as n to infinity. You take n step and you break it up into what would happen to in between n minus 1 step and the 1 step and then you take limit on both sides take the limit inside the summation you will get to this equation right. So, one can understand like you know how this limiting and this stationary related by that process ok. Nevertheless like what is our definition of a stationary distribution? It is a probability distribution that satisfies this relationship and this relationship you can put it in matrix form as in this form pi p equal to pi very important. So, you can think of this as pi times p equal to 1 times pi that is that is the thing. So, this pi is basically the left eigen vector corresponding to the eigen value 1 and since it is a distribution this summation pi i equal to 1 is what is written as pi e equal to 1 where e is the vector of all 1's ok. So, the pi e equal to 1. So, a stationary distribution is, is a probability distribution such that it satisfies pi p equal to pi ok. Now, whenever this a, a Markov chain if it starts at this pi i right if the initial distribution of this Markov chain is, is equal to is this distribution pi right or pi i for ith state 
then you would you can show easily that this probability of x n equal to i would also be exactly equal to pi i for all n and for all i and such a scenario is we will say that Markov chain is stationary or this is stationary version of Markov chain. Now you know like why we call this a stationary distribution because if you start the process at this initial if you start the process at this distribution means that initial distribution if you take to be a stationary distribution then the state probabilities right from then onwards would also be given by at every step would be given by exactly by the stationary distribution. So, and hence the Markov chain is stationary. Okay. So, if S is finite then a stationary distribution would exist always right. In general a stationary distribution may not exist and even if it exists it may not be unique. Say for example, you can look at uh, the simple random work case what happens uh, with respect to a stationary distribution. So, why do we care if our Markov chain is stationary or not? Okay. Right? If it were stationary and we know that what is the distribution of each of each of each x n was, then we would know a lot because we would know what is the meaning of this long run proportion of time that the Markov chain was in any state. So, this pi i is basically then gives you the long run proportion of time that the Markov chain spends in that particular, in a particular state is what is given by this pi i. So, hence uh, solving for this, so this how does this interpretation comes we will see in a moment, but that is what is the interpretation whenever this exists, the stationary distribution exists one can see. Okay. So, hence solving for pi is an important part of uh, the Markov chain analysis. right? And we can also relate this to the limiting distribution, in a, we will see that in a moment. Okay. So, there is reason that you know why you know you want to look at uh, this or compute the stationary probabilities which is very simple. You have this p, you solve this system of equations pi p equal to pi and pi e equal to 1. Now, so suppose assume that if this is p is finite then this is a system of n plus 1 equations in n one of them is redundant you can throw away any of these equ equations from this pi p equal to pi any one of them you can remove and you can replace with this and you can solve this to get this pi that is a typical way of doing it. Okay. Right. One can get that to get the stationary distribution. Now, let us tie these two things limiting distribution and uh, stationary distribution uh, based on the properties that the Markov chain may exhibit. Okay. So, this is the, the main result in, in that connection you can see. So, of course, this particular slide has lots of content. So, please you know try to go through leisurely. So, for an irreducible Markov chain a stationary distribution exists if and only if all states are positive recurrent. Okay. So, if you have an irreducible Markov chain then the existence of stationary distribution is equivalent to all the states being positive recurrent. So, in this case the stationary distribution is also unique and it is given by pi i equal to 1 by m i i where m i i is the mean recurrence time to state i. Right. Further, if the chain is aperiodic then the limiting distribution limiting probability distribution exists and this equals the stationary distribution which is also again as a unique thing that you have here okay right so this is what is a main theorem in connecting these two and connecting the the concept of stationary distribution limiting distribution to the properties of the markov chain why we classified or looked at the properties of the states of the Markov chain, uh, the reason is basically in order to characterize them and connect them to such kind of uh, quantities. Right. So, if you see here, if it is an irreducible Markov chain, that is what you know we are taking it here, a stationary distribution exists if all states are positive recurrent. If somehow if you show that you know the, the state is irreducible, so you take any one state and if you can show that it is a positive recurrent 
then you know for sure that a stationary distribution exists unique and it is given by this ok it is given by what is the stationary distribution it is the solution to that equation pi pi equal to pi p and pi e equal to 1 pi greater than or equal to 0 it is a probability distribution right. So, that pi i would be same as the pi i which is connected to the mean recurrence time to state i because whenever you have positive recurrent this quantity is finite right that is what you know positive recurrent means. So, then this will be something which will be strictly greater than 0 and this will be the solution to that. So, if you can so that means that pi i now can be obtained in two different ways if you know the mean recurrence time you can get pi i's or you can solve this pi i from that uh, stationary equations which is called pi equal to pi p. Further in such a situation so if the chain is also aperiodic then the limiting probability distribution exists and is equal to the stationary distribution. So, now we answer the question that you know if there is a limiting probability distribution how do we get it ok. So, the limiting probability distribution exists under this condition right and how do we get it we get as a solution to the stationary equation. So, if you find the stationary distribution which in this particular case is unique. So, that is the limiting probability distribution as well. So, these are all the one and the same if you have an irreducible a periodic positive recurrent Markov chain then the limiting distribution is same as the stationary distribution and which is a solution to this stationary uh, equation and it is a unique solution right everything is coming from here. So, this is the ideal situation that you know one would want to have it here ok. Now, we can also see we cannot make a trans a transient or null recurrent Markov chain stationary that means that what if there is no stationary distribution then the Markov chain is either transient or recurrent and in such case this pi i would be equal to 0 for all i ok. That means if there is no stationary distribution you know you know you will see examples where the way different variations are there. So, if the chain is positive recurrent then only you have a unique stationary distribution which is also same as the limiting distribution. If the chain is not positive recurrent or if it is either transient or null recurrent then there is no stationary distribution right that is what you know you will have here ok. Now, if the Markov chain is reducible what will happen? So, the irreducibility component if it is removed if it is reducible then the stationary distribution may not be unique that is what will happen and no conditions on the period for Markov chain for the existence and or uniqueness of the stationary distribution ok. You see here this first part of the theorem talks about the stationary so where you know we are not talking about the uh, periodicity of the states right it is irreducible. So, all the states have the same period right, but you know we are not talking about periodicity for the existence or the uniqueness of stationary distribution you do not need the periodicity concepts, but it is not true with the limiting probabilities for limiting probabilities to exist the periodicity is relevant you will see in the example. So, the limiting distribution of a Markov chain is also a stationary distribution limiting distribution whenever it exists it is a stationary distribution. And the reverse way that existence of a stationary distribution does not imply the existence of a limiting distribution right you know you might see an example where this would be the case later. And if it can also be shown as uh, you know given here in this cases that if the limiting distribution exists then it is the only stationary distribution right because limiting distribution limit you know it, it has to exist means it is unique value. So, that means if that is the stationary distribution then the stationary distribution is also unique and that is the only stationary distribution that you will have here. So, this is tying this ok. So, this theorem now like the third notion of uh, connected with the long run behavior is what we said is ergodicity. Now, we say a state is said to be ergodic if it is aperiodic and positive recurrent then we say that is a ergodic state and if all states of a Markov chain are ergodic then the Markov chain itself is said to be ergodic and in such a case as this theorem shows here this has a unique limiting stationary distribution. It has a limiting distribution which is unique of course 
then it is that is the only stationary distribution and that is what we call it as an ergodic. So, for that reason like this kind of theorem and that are the variations of this are called ergodic theorems which gives the condition for ergodicity of the Markov chain. Okay. But you know one thing you know, I would uh, point out here that the way we have set about uh, the ergodicity of a Markov chain or ergodicity of state is in this way as far as we are concerned. But there is a slightly less restrictive notion of ergodicity and that is actually the complete or full notion of uh, ergodicity. But for our purpose you know we will uh, confine ourselves to be in this form. So, a periodic positive recurrent state be energetic. In general this aperiodicity need not be insisted and still you can define a notion of ergodicity and that is what one does in a complete study of Markov chain. But for our purpose like we mean ergodic state means in this case are aperiodic and positive recurrent and in that case we will call this as an ergodicity that is because our aim is basically this kind of to obtain this this unique limiting stationary distribution. So, we want to study the long run behavior of the Markov chain which is given characterized by the limiting probabilities. Now, the limiting probabilities are obtained through a solution of the stationary distribution and which will have a unique solution. So, we are looking for conditions under which that can happen that is these are the conditions irreducible Markov chain, positive recurrent, aperiodic. Then you will have whatever the nice thing that you are looking for which is the unique limiting stationary distribution. So, this is the ergodic theorem as far as uh, you know we are concerned in this scenario. Okay. Now, let us look at a certain examples and how you will use this theorem in, in, in these examples and that is the way we are going to use this theorem. This is the main theorem which will be used throughout. So, you see three out of every four trucks on the road are followed by a car while only one out of every five cars is followed by a truck. So, if you see a truck pass by on the road when you are standing on a particular uh, place, now on an average how many vehicles pass before you see another truck is what the question, right. So, this is what you know you are asking the question. So, the history is given here in the first sentence. Now, if I denote x n, I can model this, right. So, you can uh, by model a Markov chain, if I denote x n, be a Markov chain with two states 0 and 1 where 0 meaning truck, 1 meaning car. Then this will have this transition probabilities that a truck followed by a truck and a truck followed by a car. Right? The first sentence says 3 out of every 4 trucks on the road is followed by a car. So, 3 by 4 is what the probability of going from 0 to 1 and 0 to 0 is 1 by 4. Similarly, 1 out of every 5 cars is followed by a truck, this car and truck. So, 1 by 5 and 4 by 5. So, this is what is the transition probability matrix, right. Now, you can study this whether this is uh, positive recurrent or first of all is this re irreducible. You can immediately draw the transition diagram and see that this is irreducible and this is irreducible and this is a finite Markov chain and hence all states must be positive recurrent and hence you have a unique limiting stationary distribution and or you can simply solve pi p equal to pi and pi e equal to 1 and you can obtain that the unique stationary distribution to be this. Okay. Now, once I obtain this then I can use this to answer my question that is if you see a truck pass by then the average number of vehicles that pass by before you see another truck this corresponds to the mean recurrence time to state 0, right. That is how the pi i has that interpretation as well given that you are currently in state 0. So, this is basically uh, the mean recurrence time is m 0 0 which is 1 by pi 0, pi 0 is 4 by 19. So, this is 19 by 4 which is basically roughly 5 vehicles it must pass through, right. So, you can answer uh, such questions using such uh, modeling and analysis that is what one does. Now, let us take a you know another Markov chain which is given by this uh, P. Now, you see here, here you know we have drawn the transition probability diagram states are 0, 1, 2 from 0 you can move to 1 and from 0 you can move to 2, right. 
and from 1 I can move to 2 only with probability 1 there is no other movement. But from 2 I can move to 0 or I can move to 1 or there could be a self loop. Now from 0 and 1 right I can go here now in the reverse way I can come via this route. So, 0 and 1 are communicating and 1 and 2 are communicating. So, this is a single communicating class irreducible and finite chain positive recurrent aperiodic you can see any one state you can take. For example, this one if I take coming back to itself right you can take here when 0 if I take in how many steps I can come back to 0? 1, 2, 3 right 1, 2, 3, 4. So, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So, the GCD of all these things is 1. So, it is a periodic and I can then solve this to get the unique pi which is the limiting distribution here in this particular case right. Very nice example this is an ideal situation that one would like to have. Now look at this example. Now here you have this as the transition probability matrix. Uh, the states we are calling it as 0, 1, 2, 3 right. So, the states uh, we will call this as 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3 is what we are calling it as the states. Now you can see here from 0, from 0 you can go to 1 and from 1 you cannot come back to 0. Once you are in 1 it, you will have to loop it within this right. Obviously, the diagonal entry is 1 here. So, this will form 1 class. Now, from 0 I can move to 2 and from 2 I cannot come back to 0. So, this 0 is 1 class 2 to 3 they are communicating with each other. So, there are 3 communicating classes and hence this is a reducible Markov chain. Now, 0 is 1 class 1 is another class and 2 and 3 form the third class. Okay. State 0 is transient because at each time point from here next step it will either move to this or this it is not going to be there even for one more step if it starts the process starts at say state 0. Now, once it moves to this class this is going to remain within this class once it moves to this class this is going to remain within this class right. So, you see here there are sub Markov chains here of this nature because of this reduced classes and that other one is transient 0 is transient. You can treat this P as if that part itself is an irreducible Markov chain and apply the whole theory right. You get a, a distribution and that is the distribution 0 1 0 0 because this is only 1. So, this is 1 the remaining are all 0. Now, if I take this one this itself is a stochastic matrix apply the whole theorem to this reducible uh, this to this particular stochastic matrix the theorem will be applicable to this sub part right. So, so that part that is what you know you have for this part now you obtain that you will obtain this as the result. So, for the whole process then the solution exists, but it is not unique. So, in the case of reducible we said that the sol solution may not be unique right it might happen this way that. So, you see that for any alpha alpha times this vector plus 1 minus alpha times this vector will be satisfying this pi p equal to pi pi e equal, equal to 1 with this p the original p right that is what you know you would see here. And also you would see that there is no limiting distribution because you can obtain each one of them and see the limiting probabilities right limiting probabilities exist, but they depend on the starting state as, as observed from here. If it starts at 0 what will happen it starts at 1. So, this rows are not identical here ok. This is identical here this is identical here because these are all I mean identical means at least within that communicating class they will be identical, but not across uh, the, the complete picture or complete structure that you have here. So, the fact that there are two recurrent classes is what leads to the mixture of two stationary distributions in this case this two stationary distribution corresponds to uh, the two different uh, 
communicating classes which are trans oh yeah, sorry recurrent classes and since they being a finite and one they are positive recurrent obviously so that's how you obtain these are the two things for those and then you are obtaining here okay so here you see here so the stationary distribution exists for this particular chain but you know you cannot relate it to the limiting distribution because the limiting distribution itself there is no limiting distribution for the whole markov chain there are limiting probabilities but they depend on the starting state so they do not become independent of the starting uh, state or the initial distribution and hence we don't call that as a limiting distribution as per our definition right look at this example this typical this is a typical example which is going to be helpful for us because this is the way we are dealing with this is what how we are going to use this ergodic theorem in our analysis okay now let us look at this example where this markov chain has states 0 1 2 3 and 4 and so on and uh, you know at 0 from 0 to 1 it can make uh, go with probability p and 1 to 0 it can go with probability q and once it reaches 0 it will it will come back to 0 with probability q okay and all other states follow like you know whenever is in state 1 it can go up by p and down by q and when it reaches zero it remains at zero that's the markov chain that we are having it here so that's the description that we are given here in terms of this um, transition probability diagram now whenever this p is strictly between zero and one and q is one minus p this markov chain is irreducible and also aperiodic right Though it might look like you know from suppose if I take this state, come back to this state only in the even number of steps, right? But you look at here, there is a self loop here, and all of them are communicating with each other. So this is sufficient enough to make every state period is one. So this is a periodic. Now we know from theory this is irreducible and a periodic. Now if the Markov chain is positive recurrent, right? then it is an ergodic markov chain and it will have that in unique stationary distribution exists and that will be the same as the limiting distribution if the markov chain is null recurrent or transient then there is no stationary distribution and hence there is no limiting distributions that's what we know from the uh, result so try solving this stationary equations right so this part would give you this right pi p equal to pi so you can you know write down sequentially and you can try to express each pi n in terms of pi not and that will you will end up with pi n equal to p by q times q to the power n times pi not so you write down this equation and try to express recursively pi n in terms of pi n minus 1 pi n minus 1 in terms of pi n minus 2 and so on starting from pi 1 you to pi not pi 2 in terms of pi 1 and hence in terms of pi not and so on then you will end up with this expression for all n greater than or equal to 1 now once you put this under the normalization condition normalization condition means that pi e equal to 1 then you will see that this is what is the normalizing condition this is what is pi e equal to 1 means so pi n is this so that means this so i have now geometric sum now this geometric sum we know would be convergent if p is less than q right and in such situation right this will be some finite value so pi not would be strictly greater than 0 and since pi not is strictly greater than 0 pi n would also be strictly greater than 0 and we have a solution to the stationary equations so the markov chain is positive recurrent if p is less than q because only if it is positive partial recurrence is equivalent to stationary distribution right existence of it right so this is positive recurrent if this is the condition now if p is greater than or equal to q that means p is greater than or equal to q so this quantity is at least one or more right then the geometric series does not converge so in this case your pi 0 equal to 0 and hence all pi n is equal to 0 right so which is intuitively also from the behavior of this markov chain you should be able to understand right from any state p is the probability that it will go to the towards right and q is the probability that it will go towards left now if p is less than q p is less than q that means 
it has you know higher probability of moving towards left than right and hence like you know there will be some stability in the system. If the on the other hand if p is greater than q that means you have higher probability that you know it will move toward the right which means this value will keep increasing the process will escape to infinity. So, and hence uh, in the long run what you would find the long run proportion of time then would become 0 that is what if that is the interpretation that you are taking it. Again this pi p equal to pi, pi e equal to 1 the solution even though you are getting I mean as a unique solution for example in this particular case when p is less than q it has again two interpretation one is that the long run fraction of time that the process uh, spends in that particular state the other is what is the probability that a long time from now you would find the process in that particular state right these are the two interpretation the second one based upon limiting distribution the first one is depending based upon that uh, it is pi i equal to 1 by the mean recurrence time because of that kind of uh, thing that you have here okay. So, this is not positive recurrent if p is greater than or equal to q. So, our interest so we, we do not want to see whether this particular thing either it is null recurrent or uh, you know transient okay. So, but you know, we, we, we do not distinguish between this for our purposes, but if one wants to analyze further then you can further look at when this will be null recurrent, when this will be uh, transient right. So, that is oh, it is always possible to do, but you know our interest is mainly to obtain a stationary distribution, a limiting stationary distribution. So, so that would be requiring only positive recurrent. So, we will look at only the chain is positive recurrent or not whenever you have irreducibility and a periodicity is ensued into this case okay. So, now you see here how we are using the theorem we are not proving that the chain is positive recurrent and hence it will have a unique limiting stationary distribution and we are finding it pi p equal to pi. We directly try solving this and whatever condition that is required to get this distribution the solution to this stationary distribution is a unique distribution that is the condition for positive recurrent. So, you can also show now that or otherwise if even even if you are not taking this route if you have to show this positive recurrence of this particular chain it will be possible only if p is less than q. So, under this condition only this uh, chain will be positive recurrent. So, this is the condition for stability of this chain or uh, this is the condition for the positive recurrence of this chain. So, we are trying to use this theorem right in order to arrive at this right we will be using it in, in that way only like when we are dealing with the queuing system typically like we will try to solve this and whatever condition that is required to be put on the parameters. So, that you know we have a unique uh, stationary distribution case and that is the condition for the positive recurrence and under that condition the system is going to be stable and that is how you know we are going to infer. Okay. Now, look at this example what happens here. So, this is 0 1 on 2. So, this Marco chain is irreducible and since this is finite it is irreducible and it is positive recurrent. Positive recurrence is there, irreducibility is there and hence it has a unique stationary distribution pi naught pi 1 equal to half. So, the system spends half of the time in each state. The long run fraction of time the system spends in, in this particular uh, Marco chain is half and half, but what about the limiting distribution? If you see p n this does not converge because p n would alternate between this and this depending upon whether n is even or odd. So, it will be either equal to the identity matrix or the matrix p itself if n is odd, n is even it will become identity matrix. So, there is no limiting distribution reason is it is not aperiodic that is what you know you are seeing it here. So, the period is 2, but if you choose the initial distribution to be this then you will see all the state uh, distributions at any time n is remain as half and half that is what we meant when we said this is a stationary distribution right. So, the even though this limit of p n does not exist it is possible for this to exist, but only if the starting state is chosen randomly according to the stationary distribution right you know that is what you know we will be having. Okay. So, this is a situation where you know you will have a unique station distribution, but the limiting distribution may not exist because the aperiodicity condition is uh, not satisfied for from the ergodic theorem. 
ok. So, now how to so the recurrence becomes you know important idea or concept to be determined in a Markov chain. So, how to determine the presence of recurrence in, in a Markov chain? Uh, there are many results available in the literature. One sufficient condition that we will use uh, at some point of time in our analysis is what we have given here which we have treated as a result which is the following. An irreducible aperiodic chain is positive recurrent if there exists a non-negative solution of the system, this is the system that P i j is given for some x i j we want a non-negative solution which means this we want x i x j to be non-negative right. If there exists a non-negative solution to this system such that this one is finite right. If this condition is satisfied then the irreducible aperiodic chain will be positive recurrent. Like there are different uh, varieties of conditions, various conditions and depending upon various nature of uh, uh, the systems and equations and so on which can be given uh, in order to show that the positive recurrence of the chain. Now, this result we are stating it because this is what we will be using it later on when we are dealing with at least one or two queuing models at some point of time. Right, it is I mean little bit in the semi Markovian setup or in beyond uh, around that time, okay. Now, this pi is equal to pi p has also an interpretation which is also quite useful as far as uh, we are concerned when we are trying to write down the equations for describing the Markov chains, right. We said that it can be uh, you know depicted, Markov chain can be depicted through the transition rate diagram, but you know. But if you have to do analysis, you know you have to write down this equation pi is equal to pi p. So, that means essentially p matrix you have to specify. So, that equation can be given interpretation so that you know one can write down that equation in a uh, nice easier way. Look at the scenario, what is the meaning of uh, this pi i? So, what is this pi i? This pi i is the long run proportion of time the process spends in a particular state i, okay. Since every time period spent in particular state i corresponds to a transition into state i, we can also interpret pi i as the long run proportion of transitions that go into state i. This exactly same thing you can go uh, give for the out of state meaning since every time spent in state i correspond to a transition out of state i because you can always whether you know the trans your time is spent here be in, in a particular state. So, whether you are looking at this point or this point like you know depending upon that. So, the long run proportion of time the time spent every time period spent in state i corresponds to a transition out of state i we can also interpret pi as the long run proportion of transitions that go out of state i. Now, when whenever it is going out, right? So, since p i j is the probability that it is of going from state i, so given that you are in state i, p i j is the probability that you know you will move into state j. So, the proportion pi i p i j is the long run proportion of transitions that go from state i to state j, right? Right? Now, if you think of transition from state i to state j as a unit of flow of something, flow from state i to state j, then this would be the rate of flow from state i to j. This is a you know transition if it is a flow, then multiplying by this pi i would be the rate of flow from state i to j. Similarly, with this interpretation we can interpret this pi i as rate of flow out of state j right. And if this is pi i p i j is the rate of flow from state i to state j. Now, if I sum over all i then this will give me the rate of flow into state i this pi j is the rate of flow out of state i. So, what you end up is having this equation pi equal to pi p 
has the interpretation that rate of flow into state j is equal to rate of flow out of state j for every j. So, this is the meaning when we say that the stationary distribution is that that the vector the stationary distribution vector achieves balance of flow and hence the system is in equilibrium or the system is in stable condition a stability of the system. That is why you know sometimes this also referred to as equilibrium condition or equilibrium probabilities because this is what ensures that the of course the intuitively if you think that is what it has to happen like when the system is in equilibrium means that you know the rate of flow into or suppose if you think about a queuing system that you know the rate of flow and the rate of flow in and the rate of flow out of the system they need to be at equilibrium in order that the system is in equilibrium. If there is an imbalance here then the system will move away from one of the, from the equilibrium point right. So, that is why this equation are called balance equations or rather more specifically global balance equations, but we might simply call this balance equation. So, all stationary distributions must create global balance because by the name of it, it must create the global balance equation. We will simply call balance equations because you know we will be dealing with mostly with the global balance equations because we why the word global because there is another concept called local balance equations which is uh, if the stationary probabilities they also satisfy this one pi i the rate of flow which is between two states now you are looking at it not for the whole chain. So, the rate of flow from i to j if it is equal to rate of flow from j to i right then you see there is a local balance. Now, this locally two states are in a balanced state right. That means that globally also they will be in the balanced state because any two states is in balance. So, and hence it would imply how do you see that you take this equation now you sum over i on both sides. So, what you would get is exactly the global balance equations. So, if you can find a vector pi that satisfies local balance then it will also satisfy global balance because this implies uh, not the other way around. Uh, not every Markov chain would be locally balanced, but they will be globally balanced. So, the local balance equations whenever they are existing is much simpler to solve than the global balance equations, but we will mostly consider the global balance equations and we will work on that rather than the local balance equation because then we do not need to worry whether the particular Markov chain has, has local balance and to know what the local balance idea to be whether it is it will be there or not like you need to bring in some more concepts like for example, it is tied to the concept of what is known as in Markov chain as reversibility concepts right. We do not need to look at that. So, we will always work with the global balance equations and from there automatically things will follow. Right. So, that is about the interpretation of pi is equal to pi p which we will use of course, when we do continuous time it will be more clear at this point of time you know do not need to pay too much of that, but just understand that there is a balancing concept that is what the stationary distribution would do and that is why the system is in equilibrium you are looking at. Now, the memoryless property we said that the time in the, the a Markov chain spends in a particular state is going to be uh, memoryless uh, and hence it is geometrically distributed is what you know we are trying to see here. So, if uh, for a Markov chain if this p i i equal to 0 then the time the particular chain spends in a particular state is uh, equal to 1 because at the next moment it is going to go out of the state ok. Now, for a Markov chain with uh, this one p i i strictly greater than 0. So, the number of time units that the system spends in state i which is also we call it as sojourn time in state i or waiting time in state i or residence time in state i or holding time in state i is will be geometrically distributed ok. How you will see you can easily see from the following argument that assume that the Markov chain has just entered state i ok. It will remain in, in i in the next step with probability p i i which we have assumed to be strictly greater than 0 or it will leave the state in the next step with probability 1 minus p i. Now, what will happen 
one step further down, further down the line is independent of what has happened in the previous step. So, that is independence, right. So, if you think uh, for example, this as the success or you know this as the failure or the other way, whichever way it is, right, we are looking for now the first success of uh, something happening, right. So, that means that that will be geometrically distributed you know from here. So, this tau i which is minimum of n equal to i when x n equal to i because at x 0 we have assumed that this is equal to i. Then the distribution of sojourn time in state i is essentially given by this distribution which is the geometric distribution which you can easily see here. Right. Now, there is one typical uh, simple Markov chain which has some uh, relation to queuing theory, queuing system or which is a very simpler one which further theory can be developed though we are not going to do that is known as the birth death chain. Okay. This is a special uh, continuous time Markov chain with the transient probability matrix given by this where B i's are you know strictly greater than 0 for i greater than equal to 0 which is what is called probability that a single birth will occur at the next step and d i is the probability that the next step a single death will occur. These are all the probability that the next state will not change in the next state. So, there is a diagonal entries will give you the no state change. This upper diagonal entries will give you the probabilities of birth in the corresponding states and this lower diagonal entries will give you the probabilities of death in the corresponding uh, states. So, the transitions occurs only to the nearest neighbors. So, multiple births and multiple deaths in one time unit we are not allowing that is a condition that is a restriction that you put. So, this is a very useful model for queues as well because when the queues are increasing or decreasing by 1 this is precisely what would be the model for it. And because the special structure which has this what we call tri diagonal structure of this P. Okay. So, this can be analyzed nicely and for various birth and death rates or birth probability structures. So, this can be analyzed very nicely, okay. but more we will see with respect to continuous time rather than in discrete time this birth death process. So, we will see more details about similar ones in the continuous time rather than in the discrete time because most of our models are going to be in continuous time and hence we will be concentrating more on continuous time Markov chain. But for continuous time Markov chain to understand that theory, you know you need to understand the theory of discrete time Markov chain and hence we are doing this whole week we have spent on this analyzing the, uh, the discrete time Markov chain. So, these are the basic concepts that are needed for us to understand certain things in queuing analysis, queuing when you try to analyze that and that is what you know we have done in this week. Okay. We will see uh, the continuous time Markov chain things in the following lectures. So, here we end with the analysis or the ideas of discrete time Markov chains here. Okay. Thank you. Bye.